Hi, I'm Genevieve, a technical solutions specialist from Esri Canada, and I'm going to be going over how you can collaborate with members of your ArcGIS organization to collect training samples for deep learning with ArcGIS Deep Learning Studio. Deep Learning Studio is an end-to-end -end web application for building and using a deep learning model from collecting training data to using the finished model to inference new imagery. It's available with ArcGIS Enterprise starting at version 11 and is included with ArcGIS Image Server. So what is Deep Learning Studio and what niche does it fill? One of the primary advantages of Deep Learning Studio is that it's designed for collaboration. Through the designation of project members and discrete work areas, Deep Learning Studio allows multiple users to participate simultaneously in the time-intensive training data collection in one central project. This video will cover how to set up a Deep Learning Studio project for collaboration as the project owner and how to collaborate on an existing project that you've been added to. Let's start with setting up a project as the project owner. The first step is to navigate to Deep Learning Studio from the App Launcher in your ArcGIS Enterprise portal. From there, you can look at your existing projects or create a new project by clicking on the Create button. Once you create a project, you need to set the configuration options, and you'll be prompted to do this just by getting started and clicking Prepare Training Data. These settings can also be changed later by going to this View Edit Project Configuration button at the top. In the configuration window, the first things are to select your imagery and define the label schema. Basically, what imagery are you creating a model for and what objects or classes are you looking to train it to find? These steps are similar to what you would do in any deep learning project. Where Deep Learning Studio is different is in the next two configuration options, invite members and set up work units. Members can be added based on pre-existing groups within your organization. If you have no groups or wish to create a new one, you can use this quick link, which takes you to the group page of your organization. From here, you can create a group. In my organization, I've already created a group of myself and two of my colleagues called Data Analysts, which shows in the list within Deep Learning Studio, along with their project privileges, which are split into three categories, project owners who can do everything, analysts who can do everything except set the project configurations or delete the project, and data collectors who can only collect training data. These roles are based on their user type and roles in the Art Enterprise organization. For example, if I look at who is in this group, I can see at the side what their roles in the project can be. I can see here that Michelle can collect samples, train a model, and run inference, and Maggie can only collect samples. These roles cannot be changed in Deep Learning Studio because they're tied to the members' organizational roles. We can test this by going to our portal and checking out the members under the Organization tab. We see that Michelle has a publisher role, whereas Maggie just has a user role. If I change Maggie here to have a higher level role as a publisher, then we can see in Deep Learning Studio when we refresh that she now has the same capabilities as Michelle. And vice versa, if Michelle's role in the organization is demoted, she loses her privileges in the Deep Learning Studio project. When you have created or found the groups you want to include on the project, you can select it and then proceed to the final configuration option, set up work units. The options here will depend on what kind of imagery you selected in the first step. For example, if your selected imagery contains just one image, you will not be able to select the individual images option. It'll be grayed out. For the grid system and custom work units, you can configure the options. Here it shows that we have thousands of work units at one kilometer size. When we open it up, we see that the image is not a rectangle. Many of the work units have no data. So I can specify that I want to limit the grid cells to be within the imagery layer outer boundary, which is much better. And then I will specify larger work units of 5 kilometers, which gets us down to a much more reasonable 359 work units. You can continue to fiddle with this until it is divided how you want it, and then hit accept and finally save your project configurations and start working. Now let's transition to what you would see as an analyst who has been added to a deep learning project. When the project members open a project, the options they see will depend on their privileges. Project owners and analysts will see all the same options, while a data collector will have fewer options. So let's check out the options as an analyst. In Prepare Training Data, you can collect training samples based on the work units the project owner defined in the project configuration. Users can add samples for each label and then mark the unit as complete and continue. Under Import Training Samples, Analysts can load existing feature layers of training samples and optionally match the labels if necessary. Under Edit Training Sample Labels, users can review and edit the training sample labels. 
For example, if there's a mistake, here's where you can fix it. Under Review Training Samples, analysts and project owners can review the work units and assign work units to specific members. They can also assign mistakes to be corrected by specific users. This is one of the most useful sections of Deep Learning Studio because it gives you an overview of the work completed and left to be done, and gives project owners and analysts the ability to edit and review the work in bulk. Under Manage Image Chips, analysts and project owners can export image chips based on the samples created in the project, or import sets of image chips from a data store. This step needs to be done before you can start training the model. Under Manage Label Schema, analysts and project owners can alter the label schema being used in the project. You can add, edit, or delete labels, or import and export labels as classification schema items. Under Edit Instructions URL, analysts and project owners can add a link to an external document or web page with instructions to follow when collecting training samples. This shows up for all project members when collecting training data under the Prepare Training Data tab. So project owners and analysts will see all of these options in the Prepare Training Data section, and they also have the option to train the model and run inference. Now let's switch gears and see what everything looks like for a data collector that's been added to a project. Here I'm now logged in as Michelle, who only has a user role in the enterprise organization. When she opens the project in Deep Learning Studio, notice that she goes automatically to the Prepare Training Data section. She doesn't have the option to train a model and run inference. Within the Prepare Training Data section, she also has fewer options. She can only collect training samples and edit training sample labels. Within these sections, however, privileges are the same as the project owner and analyst. And with that, we have covered how to collaborate to collect training samples as a project owner, analyst, and sample collector within a Deep Learning Studio project. Once the samples are collected, you can use Deep Learning Studio to train the model and run inference on images of your choice.